We're going to go live right now to Washington, D.C., where conservative MP Michael Chong is testifying in front of U.S. lawmakers probing China's interference in our elections. Let's listen in. Our parliament and our elections. It requires a suite of measures to combat, including closer cooperation amongst allied democracies. Canada must work toward a stronger defence and security partnership with the United States and allies. We must look for every opportunity to strengthen this partnership, to meet the challenge of rising authoritarianism, and to preserve our fundamental freedoms, our democracy, and the rule of law. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Chung, uh, for your excellent testimony and for your leadership. Uh, just a couple of questions, and I yield to my colleagues for any questions they might have. Uh, when you talked about closer cooperation, uh, are, you, are you persuaded that we are cooperating now? Is it as robust as it should be? Uh, and what is being left undone and unaddressed? Well, thank you, uh, uh, Chairman Smith, for that question. I, I think there are a number of ways in which we can uh, cooperate in a better way. So, for example, uh, the United States has long had a Foreign Agents Registry Act since 1938. Australia more recently introduced one, in, I think, in 2019. The UK just adopted one two months ago in July. Uh, the Government of Canada has announced that it's taking a look at introducing one in Canada to give law enforcement a tool to prosecute Beijing's agents operating on our own soil. And so I think there could one way in which we could better cooperate is ex exchange information on legislative best models. Um, to see what works and what doesn't. Um, we have similar uh, judicial systems uh, in our democracies. Um, so that's one area of cooperation. Another area, for example, is how do we use sunlight and transparency to counter foreign interference threat activities? Our security agencies and services, our experts have told us that often foreign interference, transnational repression doesn't rise to the level of a criminal prosecution. Um, and so one way to counter it is to make it public, uh, to go public with uh, the intelligence, to tell members of the public, members of Congress, members of Parliament, here are, here's what exactly is going on, uh, to arm citizens and elected officials with the information they need to protect themselves. So best practices on how to do that um, during elections, in between elections. So those are just two examples of where I think we could more closely cooperate. You know, I mentioned a list of things that had done to people that I know, that we know as a commission, who have been outspoken. I would point out that Anna Kwok, who is here today with us in the back, uh, she has testified in the past here, this year, on behalf of uh, Hong Kong. She has a bounty on her head. I mean, there's no let up by the repressive tactics employed by Xi Jinping. Uh, and even Chen Quan Zheng, who I worked uh, to help release years ago, uh, they, they meaning he assumes it was the Chinese Communist Party, in order to send a message that they were watching, um, went into his home when he and his wife and family were out and rearranged everything. They didn't destroy anything, they just rearranged it to let him know we've been here. Uh, Rabia Kadir, the great Uyghur human rights activist, similarly uh, has had one instance after another. And I'm wondering, you know, looking at you, here you are, a high profile, uh, you know, member of parliament, and yet they're doing this against you. You know, I was put on the hit list by Global Times a couple of years ago. I was briefed by the FBI. It nowhere nearly comes to what you're going through, believe me. But they said, watch out for social media, watch out for other things that they may do. Uh, uh, they refused to give me a visa. Uh, I'm trying to put together a trip. They would go to Xinjiang uh, after their foreign ministry said, we have nothing to hide. Anybody wants to come, come. I, we sent a letter to the embassy and said, I want to come. Uh, please approve it. And we have not heard back from them since. Uh, but we're going to keep trying. I say this because, you know, you, the level of, of angst directed against you and you have family members at risk, uh, you know, we need to rally behind you and, and others like you who have family especially. Um, they could do a lot here, but to people in Hong Kong or anywhere else in the PRC, they could do a lot more. So um, we need, that's why redoubling our efforts, passing this legislation, sharing best practices uh, is so important. You know, in reference to the PRC's different information campaign against you on WeChat, could you elaborate what that looked like? Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman Smith. So. What happened with me is that in May of this year, uh, while a, a big debate was going on in Canada about foreign interference, 
um, a number of narratives, uh, false narratives about me, um, popped up on uh, Chinese language social media, on particularly on the WeChat platform. Um, and these narratives persisted for about a week, and the Department, the Canadian Department of Foreign Affairs concluded that they emanated from Chinese Communist Party accounts. Um, this is corrosive because uh, WeChat in Canada has over a million users, um, and some five million people globally, uh, including many in Canada, saw those, that disinformation. Um, and so they have weaponized uh, Chinese language social media, Chinese, uh, Chinese media such as uh, CGTN, uh, the, the state broadcaster. They've weaponized the targeting of radio stations and television stations. I know that in the UK, uh, just a couple of years ago, Ofcom, their broadcast regulator, pulled CGTN off the air, um, off of television because of uh, human rights violations and, and disinformation that was being spread. Um, so those are, uh, that, that's something I think democracies have to grapple with. Best practices on how to do that I think is critically important because one of the things we need to do is we need to balance our fundamental belief in free speech, free expression, the free media, freedom of communication with the need to counter these, uh, this disinformation. Uh, Chairman Smith, you also mentioned uh, how the PRC is using money. Uh, to corrupt our system, and I think that's another area for cooperation. Often transnational repression comes alongside corruption, alongside uh, personal illicit gain, um, payments of monies or consideration, money laundering, um, and so I think uh, countering that money laundering, countering, countering the, the uh, proceeds of illicit uh, gain, I think, is something where democracies also need to work more closely on. And, and the United States being the world's reserve currency and, and the U.S. dollar being the main means of transaction in our global economy, I think uh, we, can, we can do a lot together to counter uh, this uh, repression that takes in the form of uh, financial corruption. Before my time runs out, just two things. Is the Canadian government standing very, very in solidarity with you and everyone else? Uh, very briefly on that. And on the college campuses, what is the government doing, not the government, PRC doing vis-a-vis -vis, uh, minority religions? Yeah, since, uh, since the spring, the Canadian government has been uh, standing up and, and supporting me. Um, I think before that point in time, uh, you know, there were issues that have popped up, but they are, they are now, like many other democracies, reacting to the threat. Um, you know, like I said, uh, the UK just adopted a foreign agents registry two months ago. The Canadian government has announced it will be introducing one. So, you know, democracies are often slow to react to the threat of authoritarian states, which can act much more quickly because it's one person or few people rule. Um, so, yes, they have been uh, supportive of me in, in recent months. Um, on university campuses, what is going on is that there are, um, I believe, over 100,000 Chinese international students at Canadian Canada's leading research universities. Um, often these students are coached and coerced into participating in foreign interference threat activities on Canadian uh, university campuses. For example, uh, just a couple of years ago, there was a Tibetan human rights activist at the University of Toronto Scarborough campus. She had campaigned for president of student council. She had won that election, and she was immediately targeted by students through a coordinated effort by the PRC consulate. A similar thing happened at uh, the McMaster University campus in Hamilton, Ontario, where a Uyghur human rights activist was similarly targeted by students through a coordinated action of the PRC consulate. So these are the kinds of coercive activities taking place on university campuses. Thank you. Co-Chair Merkley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, we've been and looking at live pictures from that, Washington, D.C., where Conservative MP uh, Michael Chong has been testifying in front of U.S. lawmakers, probing China's interference and meddling in our elections.